I invited two producers to make a track using the same three free plugins. The plugins this time around are the trap focused Rompler IOTA Mini, the loosened flute from Orchestral Tools Sign Factory, and the creative filter and panning automation plugin Tal Filter 2. Let's see if we can use these three plugins in our productions and let's compare some production styles and techniques. Three producers, three free plugins, episode three. All right, let's have a look at my track breakdown. Yo, what's up? I feel void here and I'm here to break down the beat. What's good? We have here the Tal Filter 2, the sign player with the loosened flute and many instances of iota mini i started with this melody over here which is an iota mini i might have bumped the reverb up and then we got the towel filter <laughs> hello i'm florian Murgala from beats pastel <laughs> IOTA Mini is a rumpler that comes with a bunch of instruments that are useful for trap type beats. They are 808s, other types of bass lines, bells, guitars, keys, pads, plugs. And I used most of this stuff in this beat. For example, an 808 is a bass line. A little bit of an atypical melody. My laptop is struggling quite a bit to run all of these IOTA mini instances. Mainly I'd say because of the reverb. I started my track by selecting some IOTA mini presets that I liked and I came up with this part. And I gave this some panning movement with the tail filter. as well as some filter movement. I doubled this melody with another patch from IOTA Mini, Guitar Islands. The drums are also from IOTA Mini, combined with the initial clipper. Drum kit 8, I like it. And then this bell sound. Beautiful. This little pad and a lot of other stuff. I noticed that these sounds already come with a really distinct character. So I fear that if I was to use this plugin more often, it would end up in sounding pretty much the same over and over again, which is why I'm personally usually not much of a fan of such plugins. But in this case, it was really fun to use it because the sounds were designed very well. So props to the sound designer. Next, we have the flute come in. And added a towel filter for the switch up. So the towel filter is automating the flute. I believe it's automating the panning, right? So sometimes it'll sound like it's panning super fast left and super fast right. And sometimes it won't have that effect at all, just to give it some variation in the beat. Let you guys hear it. Then there's this bass patch. Let's listen to it first without any additional effects. Tile filter with some automation. Then at a later point, I introduce my first instance of Lucent. The resonance pad is basically just another key, not even very reminiscent of a flute. But I enjoy some other patches of the loosened flute as well. For example, my favorite one is dynamic patch. And I use that one quite a lot, especially with that specific chord. Individual notes sound like this. So now let me give you an example of where I use the flute section of Sign, which is on this Stataco flutes. 
there's not much to say about this because plugins like this just don't give you a lot of controls to play with. Um, you have the library section where you select stuff similar to how it is dealt with in Spitfire Labs. What I like here is that you can actually select a different volume for the dry signal and the wet signal, which in this case is the reverb of the flute. I didn't change it a lot, but I like that you can change it because in Labs plugins you often have to deal with the reverb and you can turn it completely down. And I already ran into situations where I just didn't like that. So props to the sign player devs for making this a little bit nicer. Next we have another IOTA Mini. It's the Wishes Bell, so I didn't mess with that too much either. Again, I added the Tau filter default preset to add more movement. <laughs> Another iota mini and a quick tip for bass is that um, when I play the default bass here, the tip is the saturator. Use the saturator to think in any bass. This is what it sounded like before the saturator. I wasn't liking that so I had to hit it. I used the hard curve soft clip mode and it thickens up like pretty much any 808 or kick sound that you can use on it. Don't actually, don't even limit yourself to 808s or kicks, yo. Put this shit on anything that's quiet and that shit'll be hard. It's like an instant hard button. So after that, we got the drums. Last but not least, actually. And for the drums, I just did a little um, basic trap pattern with hi-hat rolls. And make sure you're adjusting the velocity on your hi-hats because that is a good way to make them sound more realistic. Anyway, I'm going to hit play. <laughs> So that's the beat I came up with. So here we have a harmony section that is being played by both the sign player with the flute and an instance of vital and it sounds like this. So as you can hear there was some sort of transition going on and it consists of this macro in vital which dials in the filter as well as the mix control of this chain which includes tall filter which makes me wonder why tall filter itself doesn't come with a mix knob would be kind of cool to dial in the existence of the entire effect like this let's play this without tall filter for a while So as you can see, some sort of super saw. So by applying tall filter, it becomes this wobbly type of super saw. Also for this B section, which is kind of a synth solo, I used a free synthesizer by Quilcom called Sim Read. the hi-hat pattern to a different iota mini instance so that i could introduce another tell filter instance on it that sounds like this actually i'm using quite many different ones here we have one it randomizes the movement of the pan a bit here we have filter low pass followed by an eq another one that's not active always just for the second half 
makes it pan left to right rigorously. Also, I used another snare from the drum kit 10 that usually sounds like this. I, like, I bounced it out, pitch shifted it down, and I got this more synth wavy snare. Hold drums together. When you touch one of these control points in Tall Filter, for each point you get two other points, with which you can control the Bezier curve. At first I thought that this was really complicated, because it means that for each point you make you have to adjust all three points. But then I realized that this is actually pretty cool because it lets you do something like this where you can just say, okay, there should be a little bump here. And usually in plugins that have Bezier curve editors but don't have two control points, you would have to make another point here. And yeah, that's not the case in Tor Filter 2, which actually is a really cool workflow. All right, let's check out the drums. As you can see, I made these drums with IOTA Mini as well because there are drum kits in here. And I just decided to check that out. You can set the gain of each drum. You can pan it a little bit. I think it's missing a tune knob, but I really like that it's um, kept simple. However, there is one thing that really bugged me, which is that I wanted to output them to a lot of different channels so that I can mix each drum individually in the DAW. And I got my hopes up high because when I clicked on this audio output tab, I saw that there are a lot of outputs. So I activated all of them and then played back and realized it only uses output one for all of these drums and I cannot see any way of clicking here to kind of route them to the different channels. Maybe the developers have added this feature but then forgot to sort of finish implementing it or something like that. Anyway, I tried to get around this limitation a little bit because just by itself the IOTA drums sound like this. So what I did then it was I just added a lot of other drums. that played more or less the same rhythm. So here for the kick I used Chop Suey, a drum synthesizer by Dawson, which is pretty cool for these kind of surgical things because you can make yourself your own drum sample from dragging and dropping three other drum samples. Sign Player, IOTA Mini and Tall Filter 2. I must admit I went into this with a lot of bias because usually I'm more of an effects type of guy. So I expected to have most fun with Tall Filter 2 then Sign Player and then IOTA Mini, but actually I had a lot of fun with all of these plugins. I mean, I sometimes conceptually have a problem with plugins like IOTA Mini, but in practice you can use them and they are fun. And I think that's all that matters, but definitely Tor Filter 2 is bay. There's another IOTA Mini thing, Pat's Bright Halo, and then I started to fill out some gaps of the synth solo. I started to introduce some more random melody bits like... This is also doubled by a piano, and then I have this really nice piano arpeggio. And then we go back into the A section that is more trappy than synth wavy, but I added another 808. Using some ozone imager to give it some width, transient shape by kilohertz, again an initial clipper. For the A sections, I also added some vocals 
that are formant shifted down a bit with the Grainworks Crispy Tuner. Tell me about the verdict now. And then in the second half, I introduce all of these little melodies that we heard in the B section to fill out some gaps in the vocal melody, like this. And I just keep quietly following you. Alright, and then I felt like we need another section to let the loosened flute shine a bit more. So I came up with... So basically it's stacking more and more flute layers and then there's again some low pass filled tremolo. The word is automation. And again I'm switching to the B section drums which are a bit more synth wavy. And now I'm going to hear the full track. Step my notches for a while. Won't you give me some time to grow? I've been searching for 